What's with that look, Esmeralda? What the blazes do you think you know about me? Thinking you can judge me by my past? I was fourteen when I led my first detachment of orcs straight into a bugbear ambush south of Luskin. I set up a defensive position, but they hailed down crossbow bolts on us. An unexpected tactic that cost me friends, my command, and ultimately the contact with my tribe. When I was 16, I tried to take command of a mercenary band, only to be betrayed, stabbed, and left for dead in a ditch. Now I'm 19, and I have chosen to leave the band of raiders I joined up with shortly after. Else, things did turn ugly a fair few times while I was with them. But, to challenge leadership, again, to not follow orders when they turned out dishonourable, that I just had enough bad experiences of, and so yes, I killed them. I killed those Vistani on my chief soldiers, which sent their brothers running after me and now they're just as dead. Do I deserve to live for what I've done? Probably not, and yet I do. And now I have myself, only myself, and a shimmering blade at my command. Sounds to me like the beginning of a different story. This is Red Moon Role Playing. The sky has begun to darken as your journey on horseback continues. You've been riding now for a good few hours, mostly in silence. You haven't felt any real pursuit, but you can't help but feel that the woods are watching you. Every now and again you hear the howls of wolves. They aren't close though, but they are always consistently just behind you, indicating perhaps that you are being followed, in the woods at least. Still, you have been climbing up in altitude. Long ago you passed by the gates, those large imposing gates that once again were open waiting for you. And now you feel you are back in the mountains and perhaps only an hour or so away from the turn in the road that will lead to Castle Ravenloft. What are you doing? I, uh, I hold, um, I hold my horse. I, I'm wary after the journey, but um, also after the, the fight that we were just in. It has all but drained my powers. We must find rest before we, before we reach the castle. Do we, do we have any idea of where we can go? I sit in my saddle, looking very tired. You can almost see my eyelids drooping just as you were about to speak. Obviously the hard ride, followed by the non-existent rest in town, has left me exhausted. I uh, twitch and I look over to you. Uh, you're judging by those clouds. I think the Lord of the Land wants to play Storm with us. 
he probably wants us to go hide somewhere and I bet he has a place in mind where he wants us to rest. Well, he does know where we are. His servants are out there following us, following our every step. He is preparing for our, our arrival. Well, we will surprise him still, I'm certain of that. But yes, we must find some place to rest. Esmeralda, do you have any ideas? She frowns a little, eyes on the road. After a moment, she remarks, Ah, uh, yes. There was some abandoned stables, actually, about ten or twenty minutes from the castle. It was where me and Van Richten got ready before, when we parted from you, if you remember, when you went into the carriage. It's not that secure, but we might be able to at least hold up in a room, make some barricades, I suppose. It's going to be tricky. I do not think we will have much time to rest, but perhaps even if we can get two or three hours, it might be better than nothing. Yes, better than nothing, indeed. Well, let us make haste there, then. I must regain my powers before we enter the castle, otherwise otherwise I will be going in with only my mace, and I do not think that that will be enough. Roshek, you've noticed about 20-30 minutes ago, and a little before that as well, you have seen something in the sky, quite far away, not that large looking, but there has been something flying behind you, but you're not 100% sure what that could be at this point. Mm -hmm. Is it a sort of one thing, or does it look like an, a swarm, or a... It looks mostly like a flock or something, but quite small. We uh, mice have the crows coming in to aid us again if there are some survivors I saw something up in the sky just a while ago just following us behind us the ravens yes that is good if they are with us again they helped us tremendously in the last yes in the last time we were pursued let us hope that many of of them have, have survived that. Perhaps they can aid us again. And I think of Muriel for a bit, and I uh, nod. You ride further on. Time passes. The clouds are beginning to sound ominous. You're pretty sure you can hear the beginnings of thunder far, far away. A light drizzle begins to fall, just as you find yourself coming to indeed an old, very abandoned looking stable. Half of it seems fallen in, but there's still at least a bit of basic shelter. Looking onwards from here, you can begin to see that familiar road that led to the great bridge that led to the castle. What do you do? I look up to the sky and I say, thank you, Lethander. Thank you for allowing us to find shelter. I still feel him far away, but but the last few days, the events that have happened, they have strengthened my belief that he has put me here for a reason, that I'm here on a mission, and we are now coming closer to that mission truly beginning, and I feel almost excited, almost a little giddy about that prospect, I will be able to act as the instrument of my god's wrath. That is not something that every priest of Lathander will ever have the honor of saying. I uh, look at the stables grumpily, and I say, this is what you had in mind? This might have worked while you were holed up in normal weather, but the storm is going to pierce through this broken down roof like a knife in a piglet. Esmeralda snorts a little in annoyance and remarks, Well, Roshek, you are more than welcome to find your own potential rest point in these mountains. <laughs> I go and tie up my horse where I can find some shelter for him. 
you are able to find a little area where there is indeed a few bits of hay, some walls, maybe an original little inner part of the stable. And Esmeralda begins to mount the horses in as the drizzle continues, although at this point it's still a light drizzle. You notice again the flock of birds of some kind coming to your position, though they're perhaps still 10-20 minutes away, they're not quite there yet. What do you do, Roshek? I uh, take off the saddle from my horse for a bit and tend to him, make sure he's comfortable after all that hard riding. And uh, then I try to find bits of hay or something to lie in, just to lie down a bit and perhaps get a bit of shut eye. Roman, what do you do? I try to do very much the same. I must recharge my energies. I must be ready for the challenges that await. I hope that we will be able to get proper sleep here, but I have my doubts. I uh, roll around in the hay that I found and uh, grunting a bit at the incomforts of getting hay sort of in between the armor and it's itching. And I stand up again, being more annoyed, and I say, let me have a bit of a watch first to make sure that our friends, if they are our friends, are welcomed. Roman, you eventually fall into a slumber, though it's not comfortable and it's not pleasant, but it is something. Esmeralda continues to watch with you, Roshek. She doesn't seem as tired as you two, but her countenance is rather grim. She seems rather untalkative, which does seem a little different for her. Up to this point, she has most of the time not been that... Well, compared to most of the people in this land, you'd say she was almost optimistic most of the time. Still, eventually, after 10 or 20 minutes, those birds come closer, and yes, they are ravens. Although you notice, Roshek, that there are considerably less of them than there were when you last saw them. Perhaps now there's only five or ten, when before there was at least twenty. And I uh, squint, looking at them, and I try to see if, well, formerly known as Bertie, or now that I know her, uh, looking out for Muriel, the were-raven. The ravens come and land on some nearby logs. You notice two of them are a little larger than the others. They duck down, and then, after a few moments, you see emerging, quite wet and naked, the forms of Erwin and Muriel. They stay near the logs, though they motion for you to come over. Esmeralda raises an eyebrow and joins you, the rest of the ravens sort of keep watch nearby. As you come closer, you notice that both Muriel and Erwin look a bit wounded. But the wounds are in the process of healing, at least. I uh, come over with my saddlebags where I have uh, blankets uh, for them to wrap up in if they care about such stuff. I... Uh, make no attempt to averse my gaze or anything like that. I just uh, come over and I hand them over and I start looking and see if I have more bandages or anything else that they might need. They take the towels gratefully. Owen mutters something and turns to watch the road while Muriel comes to you. You notice she seems very, very tired. What is the plan, Roshek? You've stopped here for the moment. That doesn't seem very wise. We uh, do need to recover our strength a bit. We had, as you know, or may not know, we, we were going to rest after that hard ride that you helped us get through. Uh, we were going to rest in Valakai, but we were beset by, well, demons of the past, so to speak. In other words, the Vistani that had some beef with us, and we got no rest at all. And I uh, rub my arm. 
We probably will need to get some rest before we move on towards the castle. <sighs> Very well then, but... We shall try and give you some time on the road, but... I fear we will not be able to come any further. You understand, we've lost a few and... <clears throat> we've lost so many. It, we can't really afford to lose any more, if you catch my meaning. I, uh... am grateful for your aid. I do not want it to seem otherwise. Uh, we didn't ask for it, but it was... It really helped us get through where we needed to. It is not a problem. It's fine. We have put everything into this. We've made our move. We've lost so much. The vineyard is gone. The inn is gone. We've lost many of our family and friends. Hmm. I purse my lips and I nod. So the vineyard was torched then. That was what we saw. Yes. The wild men, they came in number. They summoned a great beast. We could not stand against it, and... Once they had driven us out, they set the place ablaze. It's all gone now. Maybe we can retake it one day, or... The old crow is gone. That's hard to accept, but... He died defending his home. It's what he would have wanted. Fine thing to do. Defend your home. And I look a bit distracted and tired. Uh, we, uh, like I said, we will need our rest and I don't blame you for not following us any further. If you would be as kind as to keep watch for us, that would be sufficient. And uh, then, uh, we will take on from there. Owen steps forward at this point and nods firmly. Yes, friends, we will do a final sweep. We will try to distract the dire wolves that are following you, although they aren't following you too aggressively. Interesting that. I suppose he wants you to come, in a way. I think we're reaching the height of the play that he is trying to direct. Owen nods and immediately before you bends down, his features becoming bird-like feathers covering his body, and within only a matter of seconds, or perhaps a minute or two, him and Muriel have returned into these large raven-like forms, although you notice that they're still not quite normal ravens, far too big, and almost still standing on legs, or talons in this case. Still, they shrug off the towels as this happens, and the whole flock flies into the air and begins to fly back down the road. Hmm. I look after them in silence, thinking to myself that they are an admirable people. They are fierce, good warriors, good principles. Uh, and uh, I sort of wish that I had something to offer as thanks, but... Hopefully what we're about to do will be enough. They fly away and eventually become harder to see. The mists are coming in hard now, the rain pouring on you. The sounds of thunder, ominous. You don't think it's evening yet, but it may as well be. Still, Esmeralda looks to you and remarks, I suppose if you are going to get any rest... This would be the time, Roshek. You go and rest. I shall keep watch. I kneel down to pick up the blankets, and I look to her and I nod, and I remark, you should probably get some rest too. We have the ravens for now keeping watch. And I uh, just start heading in to try and get the uh, blankets dry again and get myself as comfortable as I can for whatever hour I might have to lie down. Esmeralda does not follow. Despite your advice, she seems content to stand and watch. Her attention less on the road you've come from and more staring towards the silhouette of the castle that even now can be seen in the distance, awaiting you. 
You go to sleep, finally. And both of you do not get much rest, but you do get two or three hours, which will, in this case, just be enough for your long rest. Roman, you have time to dream, however. You are standing in a great black abyss. You feel things moving about you in the shadows, just out of reach. Strange beings, not quite humanoid, not quite beast. A small light seems to be coming from somewhere in this darkness, though. You are distracted and you try and follow it. And you could just see that silhouette of a woman far away. Still, she's calling to you. Roman. Roman, you are close, my child. So close. You can do some... You can do some good. You can get vengeance for us. You can claim vengeance on him. It will not be easy, though. You cannot just destroy such things with a mere weapon. You will need to use some more. If the time comes, I shall aid you when I can. Although I might not be able to aid you after. I am proud of you, child, but I worry for you. I sense conflict in you. I sense distraction. You mustn't forget who you are. Have you forgotten, Roman? I... I do not think that I have forgotten. I think I have remembered. I am... I am... Lathander's warrior. I have come here to make his will become the law of this land. I have come here to bring the light, and I have come here to take vengeance. Yes. Yes, and and that will serve as vengeance for you as well. Yes, and everyone will be happy. And I will be happy. You feel, however, when you say this, something inside you does suddenly feel a little unsure, although you're not quite sure what. You notice the woman start to withdraw. She's going further and further away. She seems to be mouthing something to you. She seems concerned, but you can't hear what she's saying. And then darkness consumes her. You do, though, however, have a moment where you notice someone is standing right next to you. Your son. He smiles, his flesh burnt from the pyre. He seems to be waiting for you to say something. What do you do? I look towards him. You too will have rest when I carry out Lathander's work here. We will all have rest. He frowns and remarks, When did my father become so lazy? Rest? There is no rest in the crusade against... Well, whatever you believe in still, father. I'm really disappointed. I thought you said you were going to try and help me. Didn't you say that you would do anything to have me back? I... I would... But there is nothing that can be done anymore. You are long gone. And now all that remains is to do my God's will. And then to sit by his side. As his servant. As it should be. As it should be, Father. You sound so wise. So humble. I believed all of that. And yet... It's all a lie, isn't it? You claim to be happy to be the servant. You claim to be happy to do as you were told. But no one has told you to do any of this, father. Everything you've done has been for yourself. For your survival. That makes it easy for you, doesn't it? It's easy to assume that this is all part of someone's plan. It makes the hard choices you've had to make easy to explain, doesn't it, father? These words, they hit me, they hit me hard. He is, of course, right. I am but deluding myself, but but the delusion is very, very strong. 
It's a survival instinct. It's how I make sense of this reality that I find myself in now. It's how I make sense of this... This impossible challenge that we stand before. There's no way that we're going to win. But if this is what Lathander is asking, if this is the command of a god, then there must be a chance. Then there is a chance. Yes. And that is why that is the truth. And then everything makes sense. Perfect, wonderful, beautiful sense. The boy starts to float away a little. As he does, though, he remarks one more time, This isn't our final conversation, Father. But for now, I'll end it on this. I'll ask you just one more time. You keep saying there's no way to bring me back. I will tell you now that is a lie. The question is, if you could, would you? Despite everything, would you bring me back from this place, Father? I I look at him, and I remain silent. He just smiles as he floats away, remarking, We shall meet again, Father. We shall meet again. And the things around you begin to laugh and chatter and whisper and you fall back into a dreamless sleep. Roshek, you are standing in a room. It is an old room. Before you, you see a throne covered in shadow and fog. You feel a presence close by. Two presences. They are familiar to you, of course. Your mother and father. They are as clear as day now. If they have ever seemed slightly obscured before, they are now practically there. Your father steps forward. We will meet again soon, boy. Of course. I know you will fail. No matter what happens, at the end you will always fail. It's who you are, my son. Your mother, however, comes to your opposite side shakes her head. No, Roshik, you promised. I believe in you, my boy. You have always been stronger than anyone says. You know you have a place. You know you have a, a destiny. You are very close now. Do not worry. I will be there at the time, but you have to remember. You cannot hesitate, no matter what. You understand, don't you, my son? Uh, is it true what they say? It's I am just the killer, and that is what I always will be. It doesn't matter what anyone says, my son. All that matters is what you're going to be. You are destined for so much more. You always have been, and this will be your moment. But again, you must promise me, and she comes and tries to clasp your hand. What do you do? I, uh, I take a small step back, and I look down, and I... I avert my gaze for a bit, and I say, I... I've tried to lead. Should I... Should I keep doing that? Or is it always gonna end in... Failure? It matters not. All that matters is when the moment comes, you do not hesitate, and the father comes forward again and remarks, See, already he is filled with doubt. I know you, my son. At the moment, you will hesitate. You will think. You will stop. And you will fail. And he laughs and begins to move off into the mist. And your mother just asks, Please, just one more time, you must promise me you will not hesitate. What hesitates, what makes me hesitate, is what makes me different from him. What makes me more than him? I think I'm not a brute like him. I am a battle master and I'm proud. But no, when this final task is before me, I will not hesitate, mother. And you will be proud. She nods. She smiles. It's a very reassuring smile. She seems relieved and goes, 
I believe in you, my son. You will do me proud, my son. And I, uh, I raise my gaze again and I look into her eyes and I, I straighten up and I, uh, I wait for her to punch my chest as she does when she sends me on my way. She does not do this. You feel as if the moment you were waiting for this to happen, suddenly they are gone and the mists surround you and you almost for a moment feel alone, except for a little voice. A strange voice that doesn't really speak, but just seems content. Vengeance is close. You will bring it. I will be happy. And in my sleep, I think I am clasping the hilt of the sword. And you are awoken roughly, as a large amount of rainwater seems to come down onto your head. <laughs> oh, and I... Uh... Oh, I, I, it must have been a leak in the roof, and I, I roll to the side, and I, I cough a bit because some of it got into my nose. As Morelda frowns and helps you stand, she then moves and gives Roman a friendly kick, remarking, The storm is getting worse. It's been two or three hours. I'm afraid that is as good as you're going to get. I've heard the sounds of howling in the distance. I feel our friends may have bought us some time, but... I do not know how much. We should go. I stand up and I brush off some of the hay. I am ready. And I, uh, oh, I feel, uh, I feel almost more tired than when I went to sleep. I probably am not. I probably have gotten some, some strength recovered. But I, uh, I stand up and I shake off the wetness uh, for no point as I. Look outside, it's pouring now, and I'm gonna get soaked in an instant. I kind of look a bit disgruntled as I look outside. Indeed, the rain is heavy and hard, the mists swirling around you, and you can hear that thunder coming ever closer. Soon, Roshek. Soon. The end of the road is not far off now. I, uh... I take out the sword again and I call forth the blade from the hilt. The blade springs to life, a glowing long sword of pure sunlight. And you hear a hum from within, a slightly disgruntled hum, remarking almost as if, why am I out? Where are our foes? What are you doing? And I, uh, I uh, close my eyes and I bathe in the light for a bit, desperately trying to draw upon the energy of, of daylight and sunlight. And uh, I uh, speak, closing my eyes, and I speak to Roman. It is good that you had some extra sleep. The uh, ravens would keep watch for us. They were still alive, a few of them, and uh, they have kept the dire wolves at bay for now. That is good to hear. Their sacrifice will not be in vain. We will make sure of that, yes. We will carry out our mission, and we will bring light to this land. And I nod, and I enjoy a final moment of light in the room. It seems to help me focus and somehow feel that the air is somewhat less heavy. And then I let it dissipate and put it back into its sheath. Esmeralda makes to mount her horse and quickly motions to you two to do the same. Come. We need to get moving. The time has come. We ride for the castle. And then we discuss things well. Actually, perhaps we should discuss that now. Obviously, we are going to be saving Van Richten. However, I will not blame you if you do not believe that is quite the most important task. More important, perhaps, will be trying to find this important spell or item that he has protecting him. 
Van Richten and I believe it was somewhere in one of the central towers. I believe you, Roman the Red, some books, and that seemed to imply that as well. That would be a good place to look. It might not be essential, but I think it'd be very worthwhile if you went and found this thing and destroyed it. I look a bit confused between Roman and 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 her, as if does he recognize this this a thing keeping him empowered empowered? Yes, the book it mentioned something along those lines. It was was it something like a heart, something that mm, yes, this wizard this Kazan had constructed perhaps. And indeed, one of the central towers was where it was supposed to be located. We know that the Count is already very, very strong. And perhaps by destroying this, we can weaken, weaken him just, just a little bit. Just enough so that our newfound powers and weapons will, will be enough to, to give him the, the rest that uh, even he deserves. I uh, nod at this. Yeah, the heart of the castle. Right, and I notice that Esmeralda seems to have saddled my horse already. I grant at this, neither grateful nor ungrateful, and I mount my horse. Off we are, then. Yes. Towards the end of the road, Roshek. Towards the end of the road. Hmm. And then... Let us toast to new beginnings after that. Yes, after the sun is back, after the land has returned, after the light has returned to this land. And without further ado, Esmeralda leads the way into the night, for now night has truly fallen. You are immediately hit by the rain and the mist, pouring down heavily now upon you as you ride forwards. Roman, I imagine you feel the need to cast a spell of light, because if you do not, there is none now in this land, other than the occasional flash of lightning and thunder that now seem to have finally reached you. Still, using this light, you are able to see ahead enough to finally find yourself riding up onto the long drawbridge that led to the main castle of Ravenloft. Yes. Yes, I have cast the light spells, and I am I am surprised, yet not surprised at all, that we are meeting seemingly no one on this journey. He truly must be waiting for us. It's unsettling. Rushek. he... If, if, if all of this is his plan, aren't we just walking into a trap? I... I'm not sure. I think what we have accomplished so far is more than any visitor to this realm has done. Uh, that is, if anything we've met here is to be believed, we've uh, set the souls to rest to that place. With the, we have acquired the blades, the artifacts, more than anyone else has done. And with this... He might hope to get his greatest challenge so far, and I think that might be just what he's going to get, and more. Something tells me that that is exactly what everyone that has come before us has thought. But no matter, there is no choice. Our path is set. Lathander is expecting us to carry out his will, and so we shall. And we shall kill the devil, as we have said from the very beginning. <laughs> I let out the laugh again, and I turn my head up to the sky, feeling the rain trickle down my face, washing away the tiredness, or bits of it, refreshing me, but also making me a bit cold. And I, uh, I say, maybe, maybe none of this is real from the start. Maybe we'll all just wake up at the inn that we took to back in Faerun. I don't know, but what else can we do than to play it to the end? I nod to this and continue to ride. 
And it isn't long before you find yourself riding on that drawbridge. The journey is not quite as pleasant as it was when you came by carriage. The elements are against you, and you cannot help but look down. You cannot see very far due to the light, of course, but you can definitely see nothing, implying you have no idea how long a fall would be if you were to suddenly veer off this drawbridge. Still, Esmeralda leads the way, and all three of you ride in a formation steadily onwards. It is not long before you find yourself once again facing that large imposing gate and the large walls that surround the main castle of Ravenloft. You take a moment to look up and again a lightning flash briefly illuminates that there are indeed two main central towers very close together, one slightly higher than the other, but both practically built into the same sort of foundation. You wonder if that is where this heart will be, though there are, of course, still three floors at least of main castle. It isn't long before you find yourself past the drawbridge and again in that courtyard. This time, however, there are no torches lit, though the main doors are open. Darkness awaits within. What do you do? I turn to Esmeralda. So where do you suggest we start searching for Rudolf? Esmeralda pauses at the main entrance. She looks around, frowning. He will likely be in the lower parts of the castle. I believe there are extensive dungeons here. That is where I shall go. You, on the other hand, well, the other goal lies up. It's up to you if you come with me. There are pros and cons to both sticking together and also splitting up. And I uh, look to uh, Roman and uh, I say somewhat hesitantly, maybe, maybe we should stick together this one time. All three of us, to save Van Richten, to save our ally. Yes, perhaps he... He is indeed a man of of great mm, great might. I just fear that that the devil has him under lock and key, and that us going for him would well truly put us in the trap. Whereas this place that we are going, well, maybe he doesn't know that we know that. Maybe that is our only our only edge here. And perhaps Esmeralda could move better on her own, couldn't you? Esmeralda motions for you both to come a little inside, and you do so, finally now out of the rain, which you notice is now coming down in heavy sheets. The lightning and thunder have increased tenfold, constantly illuminating the castle. She nods a little, remarking, yes, Yes, if I was by myself, I admit I could move quicker and more stealthily than with all of us. Of course, if I do run into trouble, maybe it'll be too much, but it'll be the same for you. I'm afraid both plans are good. If you come with me, we will all be together, and we'll definitely be able to save that Lecton, but we could easily get penned in and surrounded by the denizens of this place. If we split up, Perhaps they will have to split up as well. But again, maybe that's not so good either. I am definitely going for him, though. That needs to be done. And you need to find this location. So once again, I will leave it to you too. Where will you be going? I uh, say to her, Well, you go yourself. Take no risks. If you uh, are outnumbered before you've engaged... Come back and find us, or retreat. But, uh, I uh, turn to Roman. Maybe you're right. Maybe we should use what we might have as an advantage. Indeed. Uh, but but I, I certainly see that there are risks with both plans. But I believe in my heart that this is the right, the right approach to take, to strike, to strike at the devil's heart and thus weaken him enough, because we will only have one moment, only one moment to strike him down, and 
At that moment, we must be ready. Esmeralda nods and begins to march forwards into the castle. What do you two do? I, uh, nod towards the central staircase where we, where we didn't go up last time. Yes, that must surely be the way to the towers, yes. To get to the heart of this castle, you would have to take the grand uh, entrance, not the back entrance, I believe. Let us see what we meet along the way, shall we? Huh. Yeah. I mean, it's a place like this, and I start to lower my voice now as we move inwards. It's bound to have trap doors and hidden passages. Oh, I'm not sure I would be able to identify them if I saw them. No, neither would I. Neither would I. We will find our way. Lathander will guide us. Esmeralda nods to the pair of you, looking down to the right. She notices the staircase that, as you know, leads both up and down on the right-hand side and remarks to you, Those stairs, do they go down, do you think? You have been here before. Yeah, those stairs, they go both up and down. If you follow them down, you will find the kitchens, you will find where we originally found the gem of the the dragon knight and uh, other things, a room entirely made of bone that might well lead to dungeons down there as well. Esmeralda nods to the pair of you and very quickly begins to move off. She says, I shall try and find where you are when I found Van Richten. Remember, I still have the ring. It should help guide me to you, wherever you are, at least a little bit. Good luck. And I nod. And I turn to Roman. I suppose we could always take the small stairs again and try and look for such a passage. What do you think? Hmm. Well, there is... There is, of course, sense in that as well. Yes, that would put us in on a path that we have seen before and would perhaps reduce the the surprises waiting for us. Yes, that is a sensible course of action. Let us pursue that. Very well then. Again, I shall remind you that you are now turning away from those massive imposing staircases. Is also turning from the way directly forward. You see in the dark those doors are still open. And that was again another place you didn't explore before. Going to the right will lead you back to those rooms where, well, you met the Count and the stairs. Are you sure this is the way you wish to go? I do feel that bit of curiosity. <sighs> and I, uh, I raise a finger as of just a moment towards Roman. I, I want to just look inside this big room first where the ceremony supposedly took place. And I uh, try to go up beside the door and, and have a look. And you move forward and peek through the great doors, but unfortunately you cannot see very much. There is no main room directly ahead. If anything, there is a very, very long hallway leading onwards into darkness. You see many statues in this hallway. Statues of knights with their swords clasped in hand, all silently standing on the sides of the hallway, before the hallway eventually ends in darkness. Even your dark vision can only make out that eventually the hallway does lead to some other doors, but you cannot see much further than that. Not as lit up as during the ceremony, I would imagine. Hmm. And I look to Roman. Oh, whoa. Oh, oh. What do you think is further in here? Hmm. Well, there's only one way to find out. But, yes. We must find our way to that tower. That central tower, the, the best way to get there. <laughs> right. Right. And I uh, push my curiosity away a bit, and, uh, and I, uh, I start making my way towards the little stair again. 
Very well, you both begin to move back in that direction to the alcoves where the stairs await, as well as the doors that, of course, led to the room with the organ and the dining room table. Still, everything is very quiet now, other than a low groaning sound, which you hope is the wind, merely playing tricks with your ears. And of course, all around, you can just hear from the little windows there are and the ceilings above, the heavy pattering of the storm outside. Still, everything is quiet. Even Esmeralda seems to have gone. She seems to have moved ahead quite quickly. You come to the stairs, and once again, are faced with a spiral staircase that goes both up and down. Where do you go? I uh, go first, and I start moving upwards as uh, stealthily as I can. Yes, and I follow. Upwards it is. And so you ascend the staircase, slowly moving upwards. It only takes a few minutes before you find yourself once again at a familiar door with some bolts on it. This leads to the accountant. The stairs continue past here. What do you do? I uh, leave the door and uh, I, I continue moving upwards, muttering something about the room with the accountant in, and uh, I uh, draw my hands along the walls, trying to detect any outline of a possible hidden door or a side door or something leading somewhere else. That is a very clever plan, Roshek, and you run your hands along the walls, but if anything you only feel good craftsmanship. This is a very simple staircase and was designed as such. There are no secret doorways that you can detect, at least over the next couple of minutes as you ascend further up. Roman, what are you doing? I am walking carefully behind Roshek, ascending the stairs. I am trying to reach out with my mind somehow, trying to feel if we are getting closer to this heart. I, I do not know if that is... It is something that can be felt like that. I'm trying to see if Lathander might guide me in the right direction. You sense nothing, much like every other time. Although, perhaps, it feels different this time. You've always felt distant. Here you truly feel alone. That makes me very, very afraid. The connection is severed completely here, Roshek. I do not hear Lathander at all. I truly hope that that his powers will still be granted to me. And you can see me, um, and you can see me starting to to uh, shudder and shake a little bit. I look very much afraid. I uh, I turn around and I grab you by the shoulder and I shake you a little bit. Grab a hold of yourself. Whatever you might think, you it's still you. It's still you channeling these powers. You will be able to when the time comes, but you can't stop believing in it. Just like I need to know that the blade will come, so you must know that your whatever power you have will come too of course you you're right you're right brother you're right yes yes i am on a mission after all this is nothing of course his power is strong here it can block out many things but i will carry my faith within my heart yes that will be enough truly that will be enough and i gather uh, i gather courage again and and I continue upward together with, with you. And it is not long before once again you come to another door. You've clearly made it to another floor. The stairs continue up from here. What do you do? Hmm. I, uh, look at the door and uh, look for any light along the edges, but I'm guessing it's still dark, is it? It is indeed. Well, we want to get as high up as possible, yes? Would this be 
judging by what I saw of the castle from the outside, would I judge that we still have some bits further to get up to get to the yes, to the top of the main castle building? Or would this be the top floor, perhaps? You judge there is still some way to go, although this must be the third floor, you think to yourself. Perhaps the castle's main floors do not go much further than that, although this staircase does. What say you, Roshik, shall we try to go to the top of the staircase before potentially returning down? Let us at least see what what is, yes, at the top of this. Oh, it was you looking at the drawings and the maps. Do you think that the top is where the centre resides? I try to recall what I remember from the book. I do, of course, also still carry it with me, yes? You do indeed. I try to consult it again, try to consult the drawings, and try to confirm, if I can, where we are right now and what the correct course of action would be here. Is it possible to do that? You begin to go through the pages. Roll me an investigation check. Three. You begin to flicker through the pages, but there are so many of them, and the book is very delicate. You feel that if you go too quickly, the whole thing could perhaps rip very easily. The lighting is also very bad. You can't quite find the page where you swear you saw those maps, but you do quickly see a floor plan or two. Again, those notes are so hard to read. You feel using your own memory of how the castle looked from the outside, that you must be near the very top floors now, surely. The towers are very central, so perhaps you are near them, but they also had a bit of width to them as well. Remember as well, two towers kind of joined together. So, you think you are somewhere close, yes, but you can't really get much more accurate information than that. I find myself at a loss uh, here, Roshek. Um, I believe, though, that we should try to go to the top of this staircase to see where it leads at least. Perhaps it leads to some kind of guard tower or something like that. But I do fear that we will have to return back uh, again after that. But it would at least be good to exclude that possibility before moving further. I shrug and I say, any decision is better than none, so let's go. Indeed, let's do it. And, uh... Yes, let us move up. And so you ascend the staircase, going higher into the castle. It's eerie how quiet it is, other than, of course, the sounds of the storm outside. It's almost as if the castle is waiting for you, letting you walk further and further into its chambers before it's ready to pounce. Almost like the spider, waiting for the fly to enter its web. The only question is, when will it strike? You have listened to an episode of Red Moon Roleplaying, where we play the campaign Curse of Strahd for Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. Curse of Strahd was designed by Christopher Perkins and based on the adventure Ravenloft, written by Tracy and Laura Hickman in 1983. Dungeons & Dragons is published by Wizards of the Coast. The music is created by Metatron Omega, Flowers for Body Snatchers and Word Clock and is used with permission from their label Cryochamber. Visit cryochamber.bandcamp.com or their YouTube channel for more tasty dark ambient. A new episode of Red Moon Roleplaying is released every Friday. Please like our Facebook page and give us feedback, comments and input there. You can also visit us at redmoonroleplaying.com. Finally, a huge thank you to our growing base of supporters. You are truly amazing and inspire us so much to keep going with the show. If you haven't yet found us on Patreon, please have a look at the links in the description and see if you want to show your appreciation and encourage our work with the show there. 
While the show will always be free of charge to our listeners, Patreon supporters have access to extra material, such as our bonus Q&A podcast, Ask for the Moon, where we discuss all topics and questions our Patreons have for us. You can even get access to the full-length, raw and unedited versions of our gaming sessions way before they are released as finished episodes. Thank you for listening. Looking forward to meeting again next week.